Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this five game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings. Before we get into it, if you do enjoy the content, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. I would greatly appreciate that at any point in this video. If you feel like what I'm going over is valuable insight, if you feel like you're enjoying breaking down these games with any of the above, that's all that I ask of you. It takes one second. It's free. I do greatly appreciate it. It's going to help me grow. And the more that I grow, the more effort and in time I will be able to put into these videos, which I always try my best to put the maximum amount in. Um, before we get into the breakdown, though, I will mention I do have an NBA DFS package over here on Patreon. We can get access to my premium NBA projections, NBA data sheet, player stats, team stats, play contact stats, core plays, injury impact insights, and NBA Discord chat access. Um, get all of the above things. At an affordable price, I've been playing Daily Fantasy Sports since 2016. I've been a member of these other sites where they charge you $30, $40 a month. I know what they have to offer, and I've gone ahead and I've put together a package that offers everything they offer and more. As well as you'll have direct insight to me, asking me questions all the way to lock. I do offer NBA Discord chat access, and um, all my tools are featured on Google Sheets. So oftentimes, my patrons will be in the chat on Google Sheets, breaking down the projections, core plays, everything I post, and asking questions there. So all the above are offered. Check it out, link below in the description. And with all that said, let's go ahead and start breaking down this slate today. First game on the slate, we got Toronto at Boston. Um, as far as injuries in this one, OG Ananubi was out last game. He continues to be listed as questionable. He's nearing a return. I have a feeling he could be back in this one at 6'6". Um, and... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. If he's back, he's going to really cut into the minutes of Norman Powell and Chris Boucher. Both of which I've seen a very big bump with him out. So if OG Anunumi's back, I'm going to have a lot less interest in those two guys. My interest on Fred Van Vliet, uh, Pascal Siakam, and um, Kyle Lowry aren't going to change any, really. It's just a matter of the other two guys that got that big bump with him out. So... Just wanted to give you my my insight there as far as if he returns. Now, this game does come in right now with a 3.5-point spread in favor of the Boston Celtics. There is no over-under released yet, so it'll be interesting to see where this game falls as far as over-unders concerned. But right now, we got nothing to work with. I would expect this not to be the highest over-under. However, we're only working with a five-game slate, so um, usage rates, price tags, and minutes are going to be a thing. So if I'm picking my favorites in this game, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown is back now. So Jason Tatum priced all the way up at 8-9. Could you play him? Sure, but I have a lot harder time clicking that button with Jalen Brown back when I can just go down to Jalen Brown at 7-7, seven, seven, who offers very similar upside and is at a much more affordable price tag. So I'm going to continue to play Jalen Brown over Jason Tatum right now just because of the price tag concern. Similar usage rates, similar fantasy points per minute. I would prefer Jalen Brown greatly there. Uh, Kevin Walker continues to be a, a decent play at 6'5". It's just a matter of his minutes kind of being capped. He has been consistently playing 30 minutes. Just hasn't been able to really produce at the rate that we're used to seeing him produce at. Um, so it, it's a matter of him getting that you know 40-plus, 50-point fantasy point game. So could he get there soon? Sure. But uh, I'm going to continue to lean Jalen Brown on this team. On the Toronto side... As mentioned, you know, it's the three up here. Kyle Lowry, Pascal Siakam, and Fred Van Vliet. My favorite would be Kyle Lowry because of his price tag. My second would be Pascal Siakam because I think he has similar upside to Fred Van Vliet, if not more, at a little lower price tag. And my third, Fred Van Vliet. But I do like all these guys. And I have no issue with going to a Norman Powell and Boucher. If OG Anunoby continues to be out, both these guys are going to continue to be great plays. Uh, both really getting it done as far as fantasy point per minute and both a lot cheaper than the options we just discussed. So they both make a lot of sense um, if OG continues to be out. Miami taking on Houston. Christian Wood continues to be out. John Wall is listed as questionable, but it's looking like he is more so probable. So I would expect him to be in in this one. And yeah, that's really the only analysis. I mean, we have Goran Dragic out on the Miami side, which is going to give a slight bump to guys like a Kendrick Nunn, a Tyler Hero. And we don't currently have an over-under in this game. It is a 2.5-point spread in favor of the Miami Heat. But other than that, we don't really have any Vegas lines to work with as far as over-under is concerned. Um, 
I expect this game to be played at a fairly decent pace, and my favorite options are going to be Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo on the Miami side. There's a reason they're priced up. These guys are the top two premier options. And then, as mentioned, Tyler Hero will get a usage bump with no Goran Dragic. So if I'm going down to the next range, Tyler Hero makes a lot of sense at 6'4". And from there, you could play Duncan Robinson as well at 4,500. This is the cheapest we've seen Duncan Robinson be in a very long time. He was priced up at the high 5K range. Now he's down to 4'5". He makes a lot of sense as a play. He can shoot it from behind the arc, and if he gets hot at 4-5, he can get you there real quick on draft picks. Where you get that half-point bonus for three-pointers, so I would be playing some Duncan Robinson if I'm playing multiple lineups in tournaments. And on the Houston side, DeMarcus Cousins continues to start with no Christian Wood, so he continues to be a good play. The only problem is he's priced up at 6-9, and he's only seen, like, low 20 minutes the last two times out. Now, both of those games have turned into a blowout, so I do have a feeling we see him climb up more towards the mid-30 uh, minutes if the game stays close. So I'm going to continue to like DeMarcus Cousins. I think it's really just a matter of those games blowing out. On top of Houston being shorthanded and not wanting to just run DeMarcus Cousins into the ground for no reason, so... Victor Oladipo and John Wall, 7-8 and 7-1, are very similar fantasy point per minute producers, so I would lean John Wall due to the price tag decrease here if I'm picking between one. However, Victor Oladipo does have shooting guard eligibility, so if you need to lock in a shooting guard rather than a point guard, you can go ahead and put him in your lineup to feel pretty good about it. And Eric Gordon is also an interesting play at 6-2. Uh, we do greatly prefer this guy if either Victor Oladipo or John Wall are resting, but he continues to see a ton of shots, specifically from behind the three-point arc, and a ton of minutes. So Eric Gordon is going to continue to be a viable play in this one. Sterling, Sterling Brown and a few of these other cheaper Houston guys that we were playing with either Oladipo or John Wall out, probably not going to be as appealing of plays here. And yeah, that is my breakdown on that one. Indiana taking on Detroit. Demontis bonus at 8-8. Eight, eight. This game comes in with a three-point spread in favor of the Indiana Pacers and a 218 over under. So not expected to be the fastest paced game. However, we do have guys with some pretty condensed usage that we can still capitalize on in a slower paced game. A guy like Demontis bonus, a guy like Malcolm Brogdon. These guys continue to be 1A and 1B in the offense. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon really been struggling recently, and it seems like people just continue to play him because of his price tag keeping, you know, he keeps dropping, so it's like they're kind of forcing your hand there. So at 7-5, you can continue to play Malcolm Brogdon. It feels a little risky clicking his button. I don't know what's going on right now because typically when a player that good takes that big of a drop-off, something else is going on. Uh, so, But Jeremiah Grant on the Detroit side continues to see a bunch of minutes, a bunch of usage as well, so at the forward position, he makes a ton of sense even though it's a slower-paced game. He's still only priced in the low 7K range. DeLon Wright, same rule applies to him. Low 6K range. He's getting a lot of minutes, a lot of usage. 44, 43 DraftKings points. Last two times out. Josh Jackson and Blake Griffin continue to be priced down here in the 5K range as well. Both seeing pretty solid minutes and good fantasy point per minute production. Uh, Blake Griffin really struggling shooting this year. It's just a matter of time before he has a big game. Uh, so he's definitely a viable tournament option, and that's pretty much where my interest is going to drop off. And overall, you know, this game isn't the fastest-paced game, so do we really want to be playing all these guys? Probably not. You probably want to pick a select one or two if you are playing them. Jeremy Lamb at 5-4 also makes some sense as well. Uh, we've seen this guy score anyway from 11 to 37 draft points well, the last three games. So he has the upside, but he's a little bit all over the place. So buyer beware there. Orlando taking on Golden State. A little bit of a faster-paced game here. We have right now um, no over-under released. However, like I said, I know this is going to be a little bit of a faster-paced game. These last two games on the slate are probably going to be the highest totals, um, would be my assumption. Maybe the Miami-Houston game gets up there. Maybe the Toronto-Boston game gets up there. But I have a feeling Orlando-Golden State and Philadelphia-Portland are going to be you know, capturing a lot of our interest here. So Steph Curry at the top, it's a five and a half point spread in favor of his squad. He's the one that's going to get all the usage on the Golden State side. And that 10-1, he is priced up, but for good reason. We've seen this guy put up 73 DraftKings points just as recently as in his last three games. Only put up 54 and 41 the last two times out, but an Orlando matchup is going to be the matchup that he needs to have a big game. These guys are not good defensively. Um, neither is Golden State though. So we can really like Nikola Vucevic as well. Really like both of these payup options. Niko Vucevic putting up 61 DraftKings points last time. He put up 77 the time before la the last time out. So 
Um, we're continuing to see a lot of upside from Nikola Vucevic, and he's going to continue to be a great play at the center position. With no Aaron Gordon, Cole Anthony is now questionable. Evan Fournier is now questionable. Michael Carter-Williams continues to be out. Um, all the big men on the Golden State side are out. Kavon Looney and James Wiseman. So there's going to be a lot of usage to go around on this one, guys. And I think that we're, we're really going to have to uh, lock it on some of these plays based on the injury news. If Evan Fournier is back, we're really going to like him. Cole Anthony had to exit the game last time out and didn't come back. So I just have a feeling he's going to have to at least sit one game. Maybe not. But and Evan Fournier is on the cusp of returning. So Evan Fournier comes back. I'm really going to like locking in on these Orlando players. So Nikola Vucevic, Evan Fournier, Terrence Ross, uh, Dwayne Bacon. All of these guys are going to see increased run based upon injury news with Cole Anthony out. And I'm going to really like all of them. You could even be playing some forwards in a James Ennis. And then Frank Mason will probably get the start if all these guards are out. And he's going to be home a very good value play at only 4K. If we get news that all these guys are out and he has to start. So, uh, waiting on some injury news will be interesting to track. Golden State, if you're playing someone outside of Steph Curry, definitely Draymond Green at 6'8", Kelly Oubre and Andrew Wiggins. You know, these four, it's pretty solidified rotation, which makes it easy on you. It's these four that you're playing. I think that Kelly Oubre and Andrew Wiggins in the low 6K range offer plenty of upside at their price tag. So intriguing options. Haven't really had these huge upside games from them recently, but it's definitely possible. And you can play a Juan Toscano Anderson as well. Uh, and that would be where I would probably stop. Eric Pascal, the guys down here, Kent Bazemore, all these guys are kind of seeing limited minutes to the point where I'm not all too interested in playing them. Philadelphia taking on Portland. Uh, Joel Embiid, the highest price guy on the slate. It's a 229.5 over under with a 5.5 point spread in favor of the Philadelphia 76ers. And Joel Embiid is the highest price guy on the slate for good reason. It's a tremendous matchup taking on this Portland squad and, and this Cantor defense, which does not scare me. So I'm going to really like Joel Embiid in this one. It's just a matter of if we can fit in his 10 minute price tag. And especially when we have another guy like a Nikola Vucevic that we just mentioned at 9 4. Maybe we could play both of them in the, in the uh, same lineup with the Orlando, Orlando value that we were talking about. So maybe that would be an intriguing lineup build on the slate. Uh, it'll be interesting, interesting to see what we can end up going with as we get closer to lock. Dame Lillard on the other side continues to be a great play with no CJ McCollum at 9-8. We've only seen him put up around 50 DraftKings points a game. We're just waiting on him to get that 70 DraftKings point game. And this up-tempo game is definitely possible. I'm not too worried about him getting locked down by this defense. Tobias Harris and Ennis Cantor, both great plays at 7-7 and 7K. And this one solidified in the rotation, getting a lot of usage in an up-tempo game. They both make a lot of sense as well at their price tags. If you're taking a price tag dip down from Ben Simmons to Tobias Harris, I do think that makes sense. Um, ben Simmons is just tough playing him when he's got other guys to compete with on this roster for usage when we could just play like a John Wall who has more usage in my opinion. Uh, at a lower price tag, so. And, yeah, Gary Trent Jr., Robert Covington continue to be interesting plays as well on the Portland side. Probably only playing one of these guys would be my guess. I mean, I guess you could play both of them if you're fading on his canner or not playing anyone else in the, this game. Uh, but, other than that, my interest drops off pretty quickly. A Derek Jones Jr. at 3-8 could be an intriguing option. He played 29 minutes last time out, and only 3-8. Maybe he's someone you throw in your lineups and feel pretty good about. But that's about where my interest fades off in this one. And with that being said, guys, that's all for my five-game slate breakdown. i got to give you my lock of the night now. Let's get into it. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be Draymond Green at this 6-8 price tag with the big men continuing to be hurt on the Golden State side. We've seen Draymond Green take on some serious responsibility on the glass as an assister, as a passer, as a scorer, all of the above. Has been lacking in the scoring category as far as actual real-life points is concerned, but the rebounds, the assists, the steals, and the blocks are always there for you for Draymond Green. Not to mention if you can just get a few buckets you're looking at some serious upside especially the triple double upside with that bonus on DraftKings. so he's going to get you there no matter what and you're just hoping that he can get some buckets because if he does the upside is even higher absolutely love him in this high pace game at this 6-8 price tag and there's no doubt that draymond green is my lock of the night 
So there you have it, guys. Draymond Green. Get him in your lineups. If you did enjoy the content, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. I would greatly appreciate that. I'll be here all NBA DFS season long, breaking down these NBA slates to help you guys win some money. And if you're really interested in getting serious about DFS, do check out my Patreon package. Link below in the description. If you're really playing, grinding day in and day out, uh, I promise you those tools are going to help you win some money. So check those out. Link below in the description on my Patreon page. That is all for me, guys. Wish you all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.